Hello and welcome to my ABZ channel. My name's Aidan O'Rourke. As I've been developing the channel, two interrelated themes seem to have crystallised. Cities and journeys. Both journeys between cities and journeys within cities. This feature is a journey across Liverpool and Wirral, visiting 47 locations associated with the Beatles in their early years. We learn about the sad fate of the MV Royal Iris. The Beatles played on the Royal Iris along with Jerry and the Pacemakers and other Liverpool bands. So I think we're uh, ready to depart now, so let's get down to the terminal and get on the road. The familiar double-decker open-top tour buses will take you around the most important sites in Liverpool. The Magical Mystery Tour is a specialised two-hour Beatles tour. And for a personalised Beatles tour, you can take one of the Fab Four taxis. The driver will share lots of knowledge and there's a recorded commentary in several different languages. Our starting point is the airport, 7.5 miles or 12 kilometres south of the city centre. In 2001, it was named Liverpool John Lennon Airport. The new terminal opened in 2002. Inside the terminal, there's a statue of John Lennon by Tom Murphy. The nearby plaque reminds us EU funding helped to finance the terminal and the nearby business park. The yellow submarine stands in front of the terminal. It used to be on the waterfront and was originally constructed by shipbuilding apprentices from Camel Laird for the International Garden Festival held in 1984. The song Yellow Submarine was released in 1966. The film came out in 1968. The old airport terminal was opened in 1938. In 1964, thousands of fans welcomed the Beatles after their US tour. Today, you can stay here as it's the Crown Plaza Liverpool John Lennon Airport Hotel. We are now at Liverpool South Parkway Station. The 86 is a local bus operated by a private company, Stagecoach. In the 1950s, Liverpool had its own municipal buses. They were painted in a distinctive green livery that was part of the character of the city. The 86 passes close to Paul's house. He took the 86 bus to school every day, and it's said that riding on the bus influenced his songwriting. The Double Fantasy exhibition was on at the Museum of Liverpool during 2018 and 2019. We'll take the 86 along Mather Avenue. Paul's house is to the left. We'll go there later. We get off near the Sergeant Pepper Bistro. This building was the shelter in the middle of the roundabout in the song Penny Lane. An extra floor was added when it became the Bistro. Unfortunately, it's been closed for a few years. Paul, John and George often met at this bus shelter. Penny Lane was released in February 1967 as a double A-side single with Strawberry Fields Forever. There was controversy in 2020 when the sign was spray painted and the word racist was written above it. The graffiti artist should have checked his facts. The name has no connection with the slave ship owner, James Penny. A muddy lane out in the countryside would, in any case, not be named after a prominent trader in the city. The song was written as a tribute to Penny Lane, but now Penny Lane is famous because of the song, which captivated me as a child. In June 2018, Paul returned to Penny Lane for the Late Late Show with James Corden and wrote his autograph on the sign painted on the wall further down Penny Lane. We'll stop at the Strawberry Field Gates on Beaconsfield Road, not far from the house where John Lennon lived with his Aunt Mimi. Fans from all over the world visit the gates and write messages. The gates are a replica of the real ones. In the song, John remembers his childhood, and this song too inspired me very much as a child. Since 2020, it's possible to step through the red gates and into the famous site. 
the visitor centre has an exhibition and many other attractions. It's owned and run by the Salvation Army. Not many people know that in Calderstones Park there is a Japanese garden. Calderstones Park has many associations with the Beatles in their early years. I wonder if John ever imagined that one day he would marry a woman from Japan. We continue to St. Peter's Church in the village of Walton. Here we find the famous gravestone inscribed with the name Eleanor Rigby. The name may have inspired the famous song. Paul McCartney explains more in an interesting and spooky story. Try googling it. In 1957, John and Paul met for the first time at a village fete behind St. Peter's Church. We'll head into the city centre and on the way we'll visit the Welsh Streets area. Ringo Starr was born at 9 Madryn Street. The house, as well as most of the Welsh Streets district, was to have been demolished. Beatles fans came here and wrote messages on the facade. But there was a change of plan. The Welsh Streets district was renovated and today the house looks almost new. Ringo Starr's family moved to number 10 Admiral Grove, just a short distance away from 9 Madrin Street. Ringo lived here until he became famous in 1963. In 1943, George Harrison was born at 12 Arnold Grove, a small terraced house in Wavertree. His family later moved to a house in Speak. In 1964, the Beatles stood on the balcony of the town hall in front of thousands of screaming fans. 20 years later, they were awarded the freedom of the city. Inside the lobby, you'll find a plaque bearing the names of the Fab Four. Sadly, John wasn't there to experience the honor. Now we'll walk up through Liverpool's creative quarter, not far from the university. John Lennon lived at 3 Gambia Terrace during 1960 with former Beatles bassist Stuart Sutcliffe and others including artist Margaret Chapman. They were all students at the nearby Liverpool College of Art. Historic Faulkner Street was built in the early to mid 19th century and it often features in historical TV dramas. Beatles manager Brian Epstein lived on Faulkner Street and he owned the ground floor flat at number 36. He offered it to John and his first wife, Cynthia. They lived here from 1962 to 1963. A short distance away is Mount Street, where we come across a distinctive Roman-style portico. On it are the words, Liverpool Institute and School of Art, 1825. Paul McCartney and George Harrison attended the Liverpool Institute in the 1950s when it was a boys' grammar school. Today, it's the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts, co-founded by Paul McCartney and Mark Featherston Whitty. Initial funding for the Institute was provided through Liverpool City Challenge, the European Union and the private sector. The Beatles often visited the Crack pub on Rice Street. It's filled with Beatles memorabilia and has a quaint, homely atmosphere inside. The Philharmonic Hall is on Hope Street and diagonally opposite to it is the Philharmonic Pub. It's one of the biggest and most magnificent pubs in the city. In June 2018, Paul gave a surprise concert inside the pub for The Late Late Show with James Corden. I wish I'd been there. John Lennon was born on the 9th of October 1940 in the former Liverpool Maternity Hospital. There's an interesting plaque next to the entrance. It's now a university residence. Brian Epstein was born at 4 Rodney Street. A beautifully designed plaque provides information about his life and tragic death at the age of 32. 
In the 1960s, the Beatles and other famous bands played at the Blue Angel nightclub. It's on Seal Street in Chinatown. The Jacaranda is a music venue closely associated with the rise of Mersey Beat in the 1960s. It was opened by the Beatles' first manager, Alan Williams, in 1958. The Jacaranda Twitter profile says that it's a reimagining of the first place the Beatles ever played. Gig venue, bar, club and vinyl record store. From here we'll walk down to the pier head. It should take about 15 minutes. In the Museum of Liverpool, you can learn about the city where the Beatles grew up. The Double Fantasy exhibition was on here from 2018 to 2019. The Museum of Liverpool tells the story of Liverpool and it's a major attraction in the city. It received funding from various sources, including the EU's European Regional Development Fund, and it opened in 2011. At the British Music Experience, you can find out all about British pop music, including many other Liverpool bands who are perhaps overshadowed by the omnipresent Beatles. The Beatles statue was designed by Andrew Edwards and is probably Liverpool's number one selfie opportunity. The four larger-than-life figures were unveiled in December 2015, 50 years after the Beatles' final show in the city. On the other side of the Mersey is the site of the Tower Ballroom. On top of the building once stood the tallest tower in Britain. It was taken down around 1919 and in 1969 the building was damaged by fire and pulled down. The Beatles played here on 27 occasions between 1961 and 1963. Just imagine what a tourist attraction the Tower and Ballroom would be if they were still there today. The Beatles gave just one concert on New Brighton Pier, which was built in the mid-19th century and sadly demolished in the early 1970s. The MV Royal Iris was built in 1950 and served as one of the Mersey ferries. In the 1960s, the Beatles and Jerry and the Pacemakers played on cavern cruises on the Mersey. Plans to turn her into a floating nightclub came to nothing and in 2019 she lay on the Thames in Woolwich, London, taking in water. The Beatles played many times on the Wirral, including at the Grosvenor Ballroom in Liscard, not far from New Brighton. The interior of the hall looks the same as it did in the early 60s. It's used for dances and community events. The Beatles made one appearance at the Apollo Roller Rink in Morton. It was in 1962 and promoted by the Beatles' poster artist, Tony Booth. It's now a dancing school. The majestic ballroom, Birkenhead, played an important role in the Merseyside music scene during the 1960s. The Beatles played here on 17 occasions between 1962 and 1963. The building was later used as a Chinese restaurant. Paul often came to the area near the Victoria Hall High Bebbington visiting relatives. The Beatles played here on the 4th of August 1962. Many tourists come to the model village of Port Sunlight for its art gallery and beautiful houses. Port Sunlight was built in the late 19th century by the wealthy soap manufacturer Lord Leverhulme for his employees. In Hume Hall on the 18th of August 1962 the Beatles played their first concert with Ringo Starr as drummer. Now we'll take the train back to Liverpool City Centre and we'll go to the Cavern Quarter. The Eleanor Rigby statue is in Stanley Street, not far from Matthew Street. It was created by singer and artist Tommy Steele and presented to Liverpool in 1982. 
Matthew Street is dedicated to the Beatles as well as other famous Liverpool stars, including Silla Black. In the evening and at weekends, the street is full of people. The Hard Day's Night Hotel is a Beatles theme hotel. The £8 million project was awarded an EU grant of £2.3 million and opened in 2004. High up on the facade, there are some slightly comical statues of the Beatles. The John Lennon statue is the best one. The statue of John Lennon on Matthew Street portrays him as a young man wearing a leather jacket. Many people from all over the world stop to have their photo taken next to John. Between 1961 and 1963, the Beatles played in the Cavern Club 292 times. This isn't the original Cavern Club, the building it was in was unfortunately demolished. This new Cavern Club is a very good reproduction of the original. Before they went on stage, the Beatles often went to the Grapes pub further down Matthew Street. Mounted high on a wall on Matthew Street is the artwork named Four Lads Who Shook the World. It was created by Arthur Dooley. John Lennon is represented as a baby. The Magical History Museum contains a gigantic collection of Beatles memorabilia on three floors. It commemorates not just the Fab Four, but drummer Pete Best, who was replaced by Ringo Starr, and bass guitarist Stuart Sutcliffe, who died in Hamburg at the age of 21. Now we'll travel three and a half miles or five and a half kilometers from the city center to the suburb of West Derby. In the cellar of a large house on the road named Haymans Green is the Casbar Coffee Club. Here, Paul, John, George and Pete Best played their first concerts. It's full of photographs and memorabilia that transport you back to the late 1950s and early 1960s. The Casbar Coffee Club was owned and run by Pete Best's mother, Mona, and it's a fascinating place to visit. The Beatles' story in the Albert Dock is about the remarkable success story of the Fab Four, and it's an award-winning attraction. The White Room is striking and memorable. The European Peace Monument, or John Lennon Peace Monument, was given to the people of Europe on the occasion of what would have been John Lennon's 70th birthday. It was commissioned by the Global Peace Initiative and designed by artist Lauren Voyers when she was only 19. It was unveiled in Shivas Park near the Hilton Hotel on the 9th of October 2010. Later, it was moved to its present site in front of Jury's Inn Hotel. We're going to take the National Trust minibus to visit the Beatles' childhood homes. To get your ticket to ride, you'll need to book in advance. Paul McCartney lived with his family at 20 Fourth Lynn Road, Allerton from 1955 till 1964. The interior of the small terraced house is decorated with furniture and memorabilia from the 1950s. It's easy to imagine Paul and his family sitting in the front room having a sing-song. And by the way, you're not allowed to take photos of the interior. We continue to the last Beatles location on the tour, number 251 Menlove Avenue, Walton, where John Lennon lived with his aunt Mimi. It's quite a large, semi-detached house with gardens front and rear. The house is a time capsule of the early 1960s, and please note, photography is not permitted. There's even an old 405 Lines television aerial on the roof. John's room was the small room at the front. He is commemorated in a blue plaque, perhaps the most famous blue plaque in Liverpool.
And that ends our tour of 47 Beatles locations in Liverpool and Wirral. And I hope you found it interesting. Please help me to send out a positive message to the world. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel and post a comment. It really makes a difference. On our long and winding tour of 47 Beatles locations in Liverpool and Wirral, we have coincidentally covered a distance of 47 miles uh, as the crow flies, and that's about 75 kilometres. If you're interested in a shorter tour, you could come on one of my Liverpool photo walks. More details on my aim.co.uk site. So if you found the video interesting and a lot of work went into it, Please click the like button, post a comment and subscribe to the channel for more on the subject of cities and journeys, including a feature on the Beatles in Hamburg. So it's Auf Wiedersehen from me and I'll leave you with these words by an unnamed writer on the John Lennon Peace Movement website. John Lennon taught us to stand up for what we believe in and dream big. He protested for peace, and many people listened. This is why John Lennon will be remembered as a peace activist. His legendary ideas will be remembered forever, as long as we all shall live.